All right, there we go. Saw him take. Nice, nice. <clears throat> There's a egg eater. Saw him take it on the bottom. There he is. Gonna look at him. All right. There he goes, gone. All right, now let's let's start that. Let's <clears throat> let's do that a bunch more times here because it's been a slow morning. Um, maybe I maybe I learned something there that that slow water coming after the riffle. I've been I've been focusing a lot of my efforts up here in these in these heavier runs, but I picked him up right. Right out there in that slower water. Um, and again, I had to stay behind. Um, and I had to move pretty slow up in here to get him. But I cast it up as, as, about as far as I could. I kept my my cider. I did not let my cider hit the water and kept it tight. Um, what was interesting there is I just kind of saw a flash. I, I don't even know that I detected the hit with my cider. So that that is something I have to be thinking about at this point. And when I saw the, the, the flash is when I set the hook. Uh, and sure enough, he was there. So um, that's kind of rare. A lot of times you don't get to see that. Um, but <clears throat> in this clear water, I was able to see the actual strike, which was pretty cool. Um, so hopefully there's some more of that. Some more of that action. All right, I'm going to stay <clears throat> downstream of this. Uh, there's a beautiful run here, uh, all the way up, starting at that <clears throat> that riffle, and then it just runs down here, and there's some depth. A lot of structure over there that I really like. Um, I'm going to stay downstream of this. Again, right in front of me is some depth, uh, so I, I uh, just changed over, put a little bit uh, heavier bead on uh, to try to get down into some of that depth. So, again, I'm going to keep uh, behind the fish. If I walk up in there, I definitely am going to spook things out. So I'm trying to get as much distance with my cast as I can. Manage my line. Keep tight to my cider. Let this drift down through. I put on some... Pretty basic flies, just a, uh, a waltz worm with a brass bead, or I'm sorry, a copper bead uh, and a pheasant tail. Don't want anything too flashy here. Just some basic, basic nymphs. Really like my drift in there. Really getting a tuck cast. <clears throat> Get those flies down to depth. There we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. A little... Yeah, he's cute, but that's not what I'm here for. Pretty little, little brown. Here's another one. Quick release.
There we go. Oh, yeah, a little guy got off. Quick release. There we are. He was under that bush right there. <clears throat> He's on the dropper. Good fish. Beautiful brown. All right, so <clears throat> I have been noticing as I walk upstream, I am kicking fish out of really, really shallow water, um, which makes it very difficult when you're trying to tightline them. So I'm gonna try a different strategy here. Um, I'm gonna be using a, uh, a tightline dry dropper um, which is going to just kind of let me hit those areas there we go <laughs> neither had to be one back there little guys though everything's little today all the big guys got other things on their minds i guess There we go. I think I got him in the gill plate. Yeah. Mm, turned on it. All right, buddy. See you, bud. There we go. He was right up in that soft water up there. Woo, there he goes. There he goes again. All right. Looks like he took uh, the pheasant tail. So that last fish, <clears throat> if you can see that to the right of that little cascading uh, whitewater there, 
there's there's a current that comes off to the side and then there's the main current and right where those two meet bam that's right where that fish was laying um i did a tuck cast got it down in and he hit the uh he actually hit the dropper uh so i've got a little show and in, in, uh the the show and the dough here um this is the show the uh the orange ecstasy bug but up top uh, about 12 inches above that is just a very small size 18 uh, pheasant tail and that seemed to be the doe there that's happened a couple of times uh, today where uh, it seems like maybe this is what initially attracts them uh, but then but then they go after the uh, the more realistic uh, fly so we'll see if we can get another one here see if another one lives up there this is like a bathtub hole Oh, there we go. How about that? Nice slow moving hole. He just happened to be laying there on the bottom. Took the eggs to see fly. Nice brown. This fish is interesting, and I've seen this before, and I don't know what um, causes it. I don't know if it's a if it's a wound. Looks like maybe it was a heron. Um, but look at the side of how dark he is. Looks like it's um, maybe he was uh, attacked by a heron. There he goes. Looks like he's a heron survivor. There we go. <laughs> little guy. Hey, when these little guys get on the dropper, they make a mess. Get it all tangled up. Little, little dude, look how pretty though. All those par marks. Go get big, buddy. Had another one there. Maybe maybe we found the spot here. So I've come across a very uh, deep and slow moving hole. Um, <clears throat> just hooked one, hooked up with one there. Uh, landed another one the same spot so maybe this is the water type i've been uh, searching for all day here Oop. just going to slowly work my way up this spot here There we go. That was a nice gentle hit. Barely felt it and just set the hook. <clears throat> Another egg eater. Beautiful fall brown. <clears throat> Again, the one difference with these wild fish, um, one thing that you can see with them is just the fins. If you look at the, there's a beautiful fins. 
you can see the white tips on them um, just gorgeous fish so fun to catch all right so as i'm fishing this run one of the things um, i'm paying special attention to is the angle of my cider um, as you can see it there generally the more vertical your cider can be um, the better you know your drift is now you can't always have a vertical cider um, the further the further you have to fish obviously the more of an angle um, that there is on the cider um, a vertical when you can have a vertical you know that's that straight up and down um, you know, you're right out at the end of your rod tip. You know, when you when you see spots that are especially fishy looking, um, you know, you really want to. There we go. You really want to try to um, pay attention to that. Now, now, just there, you saw <coughs> um, it was on probably a little bit of a 45, and the important thing there was. Um, I was really letting the fly drift. I wasn't using my rod tip to, um, to guide the fly in any way. Uh, really trying to keep a steady rod tip and just let, let as natural a drift as possible. So um, and once I did that, this guy took it. Got another egg eater here. That seems to be uh, where they are today. So um, again, paying attention to that, to that cider angle is really really important making sure you are tight to the flies in contact with them um, if i had any slack there i would not have seen that strike uh, i would have missed that strike and um, i wouldn't have got this beautiful brown all right so uh Done pretty well on, in this run. Um, <clears throat> you know, the morning today was really not the best. It was pretty slow. But sometimes you figure out what you're doing wrong. And um, I think my focus today was on shallow riffles. Um, because the water is pretty low and clear, um, I, I really was looking um, at faster runs where I felt like I guess I wasn't going to spook the fish as much. Um, this water type that I found, I would say, um, is pretty. It was, it was pretty hard to find. Um, this has just a little bit of body to it, um, but there's some depth to it, and um, it's slower moving. It's not the shallow riffles that I've been fishing, and this is where I, things have started to pick up, and I've started to do do better here. Um, but this this water type and some days are like that are just few and far between with with the, uh, the the stream being as low as it is um, there's just not um, there's just not a lot of places that are are slow and deep so um, when you find those places especially in the winter um, you know fish them fish them well because likely there are going to be fish congregated there and that's kind of what I found uh, all morning it was just a fish here a fish there um, and I would say, you know, I've kind of waited it out and, um, just gotten into my first real consistent action of the day. Keep just tucking it in, fishing right along that log. Um, that's a good safe spot for fish to to be. <clears throat> There's enough current there for there to be. There we go. <laughs> There's enough current there for um, for food to come by, but it's also great hiding. So. Uh, 
All right. Oh, this guy's on the dropper. He's not an egg eater. Very nice. All right, there you go, bud. There you go, buddy. I'm going to just continue to work this run here. Getting it as close close up to that log as I can get it. There we go, there's another one. Little snake. <laughs> All right, buddy. He again took the uh, took the dropper. He tangled my line up as while he was at it. All right, see a little snake. All right. One of the things also when you're <clears throat> um, when you're letting line out when you're tight line nymphing, um, I, I will often cast away from where I'm fishing just to get that line out before I do my actual cast to where I want to be. There we go. I adjusted, I went to a heavier bead because this is pretty deep here and got this one to take. See if he's on the egg pattern or if he's on the pheasant tail. Uh, looks like he is, I can't tell. Oh, looks like he's actually on the pheasant tail. I see the uh, <laughs> I see the egg trailing behind him. All right. Just a camera there so you can see. It's a nice fish. Right in the nose. All right, get everything out of here. He went for the show in the dough and he took the dough. Some of the other fish have been taking the show. Beautiful brown, look at those colors. Oh my goodness. Only this time of year do you see them like that. All right, well, we're gonna wrap things up here. Uh, I just got back to uh, my, my vehicle after a pretty long hike in. I spent a good, good day out uh, on the water I uh, am out here in State College, I dropped my daughter off last night and stayed overnight and uh, actually got up this morning to go fish somewhere about 30 minutes from State College. And when I got there, uh, the, 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 the river was really off color 
Uh, there must have been quite a bit of rain. I know it was raining pretty hard when I was fishing here yesterday, um, but it didn't seem to affect any levels or any color of the water here. Um, so I was really surprised. I, I normally check gauges and everything like that. It, it didn't even dawn on me that that would be a problem. But um, when I looked at the gauge, sure enough, it had spiked overnight and it was really off color, but I came back here to State College um, to the old reliable um, and had a pretty good day using the uh, ecstasy pattern uh, at the point. And as my dropper fly, I was using a, uh, for most of the day, either a size 18, olive pertagon uh, or a pheasant tail and uh, most of the fish I think I'd say 75% of the fish probably took the egg but I also um, I got quite a few on the dropper as well I got a mix of a lot of small guys but also some decent size uh, brown trout wild browns while I was here so had a good day hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you haven't checked out the website troutstrike.com I encourage you to do so also if you like this video give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to uh, to the channel. So I uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Um, tomorrow is uh, back to the real world, I guess. And uh, so I hope everybody uh, found some, some time with family uh, the past couple days and was able to enjoy the holiday and hopefully you're getting out on the water. So have a great day, guys.